going to our guest, uh, Gerald Salente, uh, again, trendsjournal.com, trendsresearch.com. And you can also sign up there for his free trends uh, updates. We really appreciate him joining us. He's an American trends forecaster, publisher of the Trends Journal, business consultant, and author who makes predictions about the global financial markets. He's had number one New York Times bestsellers and other events of historical importance. Salente has described himself as a political atheist and a citizen of the world. He's appeared on a guest television on shows such as Oprah Winfrey, The Today Show, Good Morning America, CBS News, Morning, Glenn Beck, NBC Nightly News, Alex Jones Show, Russia Today, and many more, trendsresearch.com. And he joins us, uh, but I got a sneaking suspicion, because he was on hold earlier when I talked about Brian Williams, that he's probably got something to say about another uh, stolen glory phony like Hillary Clinton. Gerald, what's your take on Brian Williams? It's a big story, Alex, not because he's just a typical prostitute, because these are the people that lied us into the Iraq war. These are the ones that sold the war, and little low-life boys like him just keep selling it. A war based on lies, and they just keep the lie going by bringing it to whole new levels. We did a Trends Journal report, a special report, back in June of 2008. And we had some quotes from people like Katie Cork in response to Scott McClellan's book, who showed how he was the, uh, the spokesperson there, the, uh, the con man for... Uh, Bush for a while, his press secretary, and showing how that they pushed the war. Here's a quote from Katie Couric. She says, quote, there was such a significant march to war and people who questioned it very early on, and really as the war progressed, were considered unpatriotic. There was a lot of pressure from the Bush White House. There was a sense of pressure from the corporations who own where we work and from government itself to really squash any kind of dissent. This is from Katie Couric. This is from the woman who you might want to remember. She was the one that said as the war broke out, I just want you to know I think Navy SEALs rock. So you got one quote after another. This is from Jessica Yellen when she was with MSNBC. Quote, the press corps was under enormous pressure from corporate executives, frankly, to make sure this was a war that was presented in a way that was consistent with the patriotic fervor of the nation. Boy, Goring and Hitler would have been proud of these people. What a bunch of low-life little scum and scumettes. And Brian Williams is just one of them. Another little boy with a big mouth, a bad attitude, and cojones the size of a mothball. I go on. I was in Kuwait for the buildup of the war, and yes, we heard from the Pentagon on my cell phone the minute they heard us report something that they didn't like. The tone at the time was quite extraordinary. Hey, you know who said that? NBC's Brian Williams. Going back to Yellen. The higher the president's ratings, the more pressure I had from news executives to put on a positive story about the president. This is America. You people are disgusting. You'll get sold out and buy it out for pennies on the dollar. You know why? Because you're prostitutes. You're whores. These are whores for a war based on lies. Based on lies, let's remember this. Gerald, one. I want to go to that, but since you mentioned this, I was going to bring this up later. MSNBC suffers lowest ratings in a decade. They only have, uh, it says, 55,000 viewers an hour in a key demographic. Their average show, a little over 100,000. Their top shows, about 250,000. That is joke level. I mean, you do one YouTube video, 
It has 200,000 views. This is incredible. But last night, I called uh, this reporter, Kelly uh, Evans, that attacked Senator Rand Paul for saying we shouldn't be forced to take vaccines and, and, and engaging in propaganda and saying vaccines are totally safe and effective. I called her a media whore pimping out her audience. Well, notice MSNBC, CNBC, Media Matters, Raw Story, they all ran similar headlines because they all take their talking points from um, Media Matters. They write the first article, the White House runs it, then they copy it. So a direct White House uh, talking point, speaking about talking points. Alex Jones defends listener Rand Paul on vaccines by attacking whore, they have that in quotes, trash, tramp, filth, scum. Now, you actually read the transcript. They admit I called her a media whore and using your term, a prostitute, even gave you credit for that. But but then, oh, Gerald Salente is calling her a streetwalker. Or I am. No, we're not. A streetwalker has a lot more credibility than these ghoulish vampires getting all these pharmaceutical dollars and selling wars and the rest of it. And then there's such media whores, they imply that I physically called her a streetwalker when I never did that. This is why they have no viewers, Gerald. They're a pack of lying scum. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, they are. Here's another quote, by the way, from another piece of lying scum. This was Charlie Gibson. Everybody loved him on ABC. Quote, I can remember getting in trouble with administration officials. Oh, you got in trouble, little Charlie? Ooh, because of asking questions they didn't feel comfortable with. Why, you little boy. I'll go on. There was just a drumbeat of support from the administration and it is not our job to debate them. Fourth estate? No, man. You're working on the estate that's the brothel down the corner from the White House. You are a prostitute. Do you agree that you actual are... hookers are a lot more moral than these people? Nah, they both do it. They'll, you know, they get paid for a couple of bucks to do anything. You name the trick, you give them enough money, and they'll do it. They all show their colors here. Every one of these people admitted what cowards they are. Katie Cork, hey, I got pressure from the corporation. You think I want to lose my job? No. Charlie Gibson, we shouldn't question them, but boy, they'll grill you or me, won't they? These are all little lying people. They are a disgrace to America because here's the big deal here, Alex. They sold us a war based on lies. And here was from one of the second in command of the liars in chief. Vice President Dick Cheney said in his pre-war pitch, quote, simply stated, there is no doubt that Saddam Hussein now has weapons of mass destruction. There is no doubt that he's amassing them to use them against, you know, he's going to use them against our friends. Oh, yeah, your friends and mine. Dick Cheney, our another friend. lying prostitute whore uh, or a king whore. We'll be right back. Gerald, finish the whole quote. Gerald Salente is our guest. I'm Alex Jones. There's our mighty control room crew doing a fabulous job putting up documents and articles for every claim we make. What good is a big Berkey water filter? We get that question a lot here at BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. And in a word, the answer is protection. Protection from water main breaks, E. coli contamination, environmental chemical spills, pesticide runoff, chlorine taste and smell, and all forms of fluoride. Plus, Big Berkey Water Filters are the original gravity water filter system and most trusted on the market for a reason. Tested by multiple independent NSF EPA certified labs, they are the gold standard in water purification. At only 1.7 cents a gallon, a single set of filters can last for five to ten years. That means big savings. Big Berkey, the one that's powerful enough to purify stagnant pond water. Get a Big Berkey today at BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. GCN listeners receive 5% off all ceramic filter systems. Visit our website or call 1-877-99-BERKEY. That's 877-99-BERKEY. Big Berkey Water Filters, for the love of clean water. 
Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-2237 for the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As Good As Gold can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800-686-2237. Hi folks, Alex Jones here with some important information. I want to tell you about Matt Redhawk and his team of patriots over at My Patriot Supply. Several years ago, Matt was sitting in his two-bedroom apartment, frustrated with the direction this country was headed, and the charlatans willing to sell us out for a quick buck. Deciding to take action, a company run by Patriots for Patriots was born. My Patriot Supply has never taken a loan or accepted outside funding. They now operate two distribution facilities and employ over 50 hardworking American men and women. It is rare to find companies who practice what they preach. And that's why I stock my pantry with high-quality storable foods from My Patriot Supply. Go to MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex today for special offers on emergency food storage or call their preparedness specialist at 866-229-0927. That's 866-229-0927. Do business with someone who shares your values. MyPatriotSupply.com slash Alex. It's no secret that government and big business buy in bulk and get huge discounts not available to the little guy. Until now. Introducing a breakthrough crowd buying website where people can join together, buy in bulk, and get massive discounts on millions of popular products. It's TogetherSave.com. TogetherSave.com. You can save 20, 30, or even 50% off tablets, smartphones, cars, appliances, textbooks, sports equipment, video games, and much more. All with free delivery. Check it out. TogetherSave.com. Visit now and start group buying today at TogetherSave.com. Genesis is defined as an origin, creation, or the beginning. Genesis Communications Network began with the mission of providing you with the kind of compelling content you're listening to now. And at GCNlive.com, you'll find a free archive of our nation's history, narrated by GCN hosts. Explore, share, and pass down to future generations. GCN is the future of talk radio, but we should always strive to learn from our past. Together, we are GCNlive.com. GCN. The Good Ship Info Wars continues on. I'm your host, Alex Jones. Gerald Salente is our guest. We're going to open the phones up later in the hour for your questions or comments for Gerald, specifically on trends or news items. 800-259-9231. Let's have some first-time callers. It'll be wide open phones in the third hour. 800-259-9231. Gerald, we all know about the WMD lies, the bipartisan fraud, but I love how these prostitutes come out later like Gibbs and says, yeah, of course, drones are operating. They're killing people. We're told to say it doesn't exist, even though it's public. Uh, but I think they've jumped the shark saying two plus two equals five and raising the debt limit doesn't raise the debt limit. I mean, look at MSNBC. Inside MSNBC's impending shakeup, cancellation, reboots. Well, I mean, you can't resurrect a person that's this dead. They represent a view that's popular with 7% of the American people. That's what Congress's approval rating is. I don't see how they can resurrect themselves. Have the walking dead, in fact, that's what the mainstream media is. They're prostitutes, they're dinosaur media, my term. But I really think they're the walking dead media. I mean, do they understand how hated they are and, and, and uh, the fact that almost no one even watches them anymore, Gerald? The prostitutes, the, the prostitutes care? No, as long as they get paid. And here's the deal, Alex. This is a much bigger story, again. That's why I wanted to talk about it. They lied us into war. The facts are there. From Cheney beginning the lies, Bush keeping me going, Condo Lisa Rice, and Colin, the perfect word for what- Condom and Colin, yeah, through. that'll be a law firm. Yeah, they, they, the, the, they lied us into war, and these people facilitated it. This is a big story. 
They have slaughtered how many, what is the estimate, a million people? 1.3 million lot? Lancet Medical Journal as of 2008. God knows what it is now. And what are we, are we seeing our troops, 22 of them committing suicide a day? Oh, they got them on secret death list. They won't even give them health care. 22 a day? So what I'm saying is the importance of this is that little low-life boys and girls like Katie Couric and Brian Williams, Janet Yellen, Charlie Gibson, oh, by the way, FAIR, Fairness and Accuracy in Reporting, they had done a, they had done a study of the lead-up to the Iraq War. They only brought in 1% of the people to talk against the war. The rest were all in favor, or and only 6% knew. Donahue had the top ratings, 5 million viewers a night on MSNBC, and they fired him because he was a real liberal. He was actually against the war and torture, so they fired their only star. And they, and they, they uh, fired Ventura because he was against it, too. So the importance of this is how easily propaganda sells. And what I keep telling people, you know, Mr. Salenti, what are some good business opportunities for me? And I say, look, the big one is propaganda. You could do it cheaply, stupidly, and you could get great results. So I'm mentioning this because of the Iraq war. That's costing us, according to what, Stiglitz, about $3 trillion? And based on lies, but here's the important element. Just as these little low-life people sold us the Iraq war, get ready for them to sell us the next one. And the power of the mainstream media should not be really downplayed. Even though a lot of people don't follow them anymore, the people pick up the sound bites from them. No, no, them. I totally agree. Even though their channels themselves have almost no viewers, they put out the talking point on MSNBC, CNN, then it's picked up by the comedy shows, the TV shows, the media, and is regurgitated locally, so they still have great power. Exactly, and what I'm saying is just as they sold us the Iraq war, just as they keep selling the Iraq and Afghan war, get ready for these same little people of no morality, no dignity, and no self-respect to bow down, suck up, and start selling us the next war. The proof is here. The proof is in the lies stated. You know, by you know that's Brian true. Williams. They helped put ISIS and Al Qaeda in. Now we've got to go fight them. Our troops have got to go die fighting them. It'll be a real war, but but a staged event helping them get into power. And then these people sit back, not facing any of the gunfire, but then claiming they were under gunfire because Brian Williams wants to be a hero. On top of it, he is such a fraud. Total, a total like the rest of them whose names I mentioned and whose quotes I read. I'm not casting judgment from them. I am analyzing their words and giving a description for who they are from what they said. They are so, media whores. Prostitutes. They are whores of the system. I mean, it's just a fact. And they should be That's proud right. of that. I mean, they should put a red light out. I guess they kind of have. Uh, Gerald, let's come back, get into some of the top trends and then phone calls. But we have this special report first that's very powerful on hacking cars. Stay with us. Gerald Salente, I want to get into trends here with you. Um, and, of course, trendsresearch.com. And I want to break that down and then take some calls. But hearing that report, folks can go to the site and see it. It's more powerful if you see it. This is really what's going on. And we believe, and we went to California to investigate, that Hastings was uh, basically hacked and driven into the tree. Uh, we talked to his family and others. He was running from his life from the feds and a Homeland Security uh, counterterrorism force. Uh, he was involved in secret operations. He was probably CIA. Uh, we talked to his wife, who thought he'd been probably killed. Joe Biggs knew her, went to the funeral. He was good friends with Hastings. Uh, and then she changed her whole story. Uh, but regardless, the technology itself to surveil and tax us by the mile, and now it's all being announced. Are we stupid enough to let this happen, Gerald Salente? Well, we're not, but most people are. And it just goes back to what you're, you were talking about with the vaccinations. How would that woman on, on Fox say something to the effect that, you know, this is a time when you should listen to Big Brother? 
So fear and hysteria are very easy sales to make. And it goes back to the Brian Williams. It goes back to propaganda. So there are people like us, and that's why they attack people like you and me, because we don't take their baloney or buy their BS, and we can't be paid off. We say what we believe and what we think is factual rather than sucking up and selling their lies. So I think the majority of Americans will gladly buy it because, quote, they're going to protect us and make us safe, just like with this vaccination thing. By the way, here's a story that no one's talking about in the news. I started going back and looking up some old research. I remember when they were selling estrogen for women, hormone replacement. You're getting into menopause? We got a solution for you. And they kept selling this it nonstop. And anyone that came out against it, they were branded just like they're branding people now that don't want to inoculate a tiny little baby that comes out of the mother's womb after being in there for nine months and then shooting it up with his whole array of unknown toxins and saying it's okay. Yeah, where's they the common the same, sense? I mean, any they, idiot knows that's not smart. They did the same thing with estrogen. Then when they found out that it did everything to kill women that they said they were going to save them with, they hardly talked about it. They, I wrote about this in detail I remember. back in 2002. I remember when it all came out that estrogen had given millions of women cancer. Yes. but you re And remember how those same little low-life people on NBC, CBS, ABC, the Cartoon News Network, CNN, went after everyone that said that these were dangerous to women's health. And then when they were proven to be dangerous, not a peep from the prostitutes. So again, the biggest story is going back to the hacking is it's a takeover. It's the top story in the Trends Journal, the grand manipulation. By the way, that's written by Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, of course, you know, on your show, former assistant treasury secretary to Ronald Reagan. This is a complete takeover. The government has been taken over. The multinationals are in charge. This is a conspiracy theory. Oh, how about that Trans-Pacific Partnership that nobody's talking about, huh? Isn't that a nice one? Well, Here's that's what's frustrating is that it's all out in the open. They don't even hide it anymore. Because people, smartphones, how about dumb phones? How about all this technology has made people even less connected because their minds are going into so many different directions that they're not paying attention to the facts? They're, it's easy to manipulate the masses now more than ever. By the way, the French have just proven they're as stupid as Americans. And I could give you the proof. Go back to before 9-11. George Bush just gets elected. He's only in office, what, about eight months? His popularity is going below 50% after just getting elected. 9-11 happens. Man, the imbecile in chief became a brilliant guy. Go look what happened over there in France. Hollande's popularity rating was 12%. Now with that attack over there, it's pushing up over 50%. People buy propaganda really quickly, and now that they're in control of all these different elements that wire us together, their power is even greater. And that's why they try to media matters. Media matters for this. They're a wasted organization. All they do is pump the Democratic BS baloney and attack anyone that attacks their little boys and girls. Gerald, I want to race through because I promise to go to callers. They want to talk to you. They got questions. But race through some of the trends that are developing because uh, you've pretty accurately guessed what was coming up last year to this year. What else are you watching right now? All right. On the economic front, look at the volatility in the markets. Yesterday, crude was down in, 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 in West Texas, you know, five and a half, six percent. The day before was up. Now it's back up again, five and a half, six percent. Look at the markets. The market will be up 250 points. All of a sudden, 20 minutes before closing, it's down. 
Day after day, the volatility in the markets, the equity markets worldwide since the beginning of this year is like nothing I have ever seen before. It's out of control. Doesn't it speak to rigging? It hurts the average investor, but helps the insiders? It, it's all rigged. Again, the grand manipulation. And one of the other stories in the Trends Journal is bankism. That's written by Nomi Prince. Of course, she wrote the book, All the President's Bank. Gold, uh, Goldman Sachs, former managing director. Right. Now, what do we have here? This is not capitalism. Everybody grow up about it. It's fascism. There is no such thing in capitalism as too big to fail. Bankism is the merger of state and corporate powers, and it's going on everywhere. You talked about the average investor. Here's how they're shafting all of us. They're doing it in Europe, they're doing it in China, they're doing it in Japan, they're doing it in the U.S., they're doing it everywhere with record low interest rates. They have not raised interest rates in the United States since 2006. What does that mean? It means they used to have a thing when we were young people that you put money in a bank and they had a thing called savings account. You get more money than you re return Now they're on talking interest. about making you pay to keep money in a bank. That's right. They have negative interest rates now in Europe, 0.25% to keep your money there. So now what this has done is all this cheap money is going to the banks so they can loan it to us back at any rate that they could get as they're borrowing it at 0.25%. So they have these, these payday loans, 800%, credit card loans, what, 30%? And they're getting it literally for free. Exactly. <laughs> now you look at the growth in the stock market. Half the growth in the stock market has come from companies buying back their stock because they are members of the Too Big to Fail Club, the Bankism Club and the Grand Manipulation Club. They're the Davos boys and girls. And here's what they do. They borrow the money for almost nothing. They buy back their stock. They raise it up. And then they make all this dough because they're on the inside. The other money from the cheap rates has come from mergers and acquisitions because they too could borrow the money for almost nothing. Merger and acquisition activity in 2014 was back to 2007 levels. Now let's put it into perspective for all of us. Even these cheap interest rates have not been enough to boost the housing market. The only growth is coming from the top. 40% of first time home buyers used to be people between 25 to 35. Now they can't afford to buy homes anymore. That number's down to 24, 26%. So the only deal this is doing, whether it was the new deal they just did over there in Europe with Mario Draghi, the guy that was the former head of the Goldman Sachs gang, the European division, that's now the head of the president of the of the uh, European Central Bank, all of this quantitative easing is only enriching the rich. I'm not making this up. Here's the number, you know it. Oxfam came out with it. By next year, 1% of the people will have more dough than 99% of the rest of and us. And that is a tiny percent of the 1%. They're, they're then gonna scapegoat nouveau riche and upper middle class, and they're financing class warfare, Davos is, to sick the giant poor mass on any wealth that's there that isn't part of the inside club. And then they've got pressure from above and below. They take over the whole system. We'll get to more trends with Gerald Salente here in a moment, but let's get to some calls for Gerald Salente. Marty in Texas, you're a first time caller. You're on the air with Gerald Salente. Hello. Yes, sir, go ahead. Okay, I uh, have a couple of quick uh, cogent points. Um, not necessarily. It's for okay. Go ahead. Gerald. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, as to the, uh, the uh, mandatory vaccination push that's, uh, that's going on now, uh, I have a, a, an idea for actually being able to do something about it. And it's, it's an, a hash jacking campaign. Uh, every, uh, every post, every tweet, everything that goes out there should contain the hashtag, my body, my choice. That way, uh, if it co-ops that uh, that popular meme. Absolutely, we should be hijacking this. Listen, I'm not trying to be mean, but we got Gerald for a limited time. I'm going to put you on hold and come back to you. These are calls for Gerald Salente on trends. And we don't really screen calls, but when a guest is on, my heavens, 
just try to address it there. But it, I, I love the fact you're trying to take action, just that we'll get to you after Gerald goes. And I want to get into the whole vaccine thing then. So we'll hold you over till then. Uh, Matt in Idaho, first time caller you're on the air with Gerald Salente. I called about the vaccination, so if you want to put me back on hold, okay, that's fine. Okay, uh, okay, I don't know what's going on with the calls right now, but I, I was saying to the callers on air, this is just clear the board. Shut the board down. Clear it. We'll have to do that. Uh, for the folks up at GCN, they're taking the calls. We're taking calls for Gerald Salente. 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. And, and listen, I'm not mad. I'm not criticizing anybody. I love our listeners. I love our callers. We have the most open call system in the world for talk radio. We don't try to control what you say. We don't censor what you say. But when we say we're on a topic, it's next hour that I was going to open the phones up. So people got confused on your vaccine stories. Are you for vaccines? Are you against them? Have you had good results? Have you had bad results? That's what I did yesterday. Nobody called in supporting them. All we got was horror stories. So I want to hear from you again after Gerald leaves us at five after or so. But I do want to take a few calls for Gerald. The folks are always calling us, wanting us to, you know, to get him on or ask Gerald this, ask Gerald that. We will come back and take some quick questions for Gerald Salente and get a few more trends with him. I'm Alex Jones, Infowars.com. Stay with us. This hour brought to you by InfidelBodyArmor.com. When it hits the fan, don't be left without the body armor that will save your life. With prices starting at just $374.99 and ships free. Get yours at InfidelBodyArmor.com. Just won't quit. Hi, Ted Anderson with Midas Resources. Is it time to convert paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver yet? Get our 10 Reasons book free. Call 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Worried about getting sick and feeling terrible for days or even weeks? You need Immudine for a healthy immune system. Why get sick and bother with products that just don't work? For just a dollar a day, Immudine is all natural and safe for all lifestyles. Call 866-257-8668 to buy now before it's too late, before you get sick. Or go to immudyne.com, immudine.com, or call 866-257-8668. When an emergency happens, you could be left to fend for yourself and your family. An outbreak of contagious disease can happen anywhere. Because we're faced with more diseases than ever before, we need a better solution than ever before. Fortunately, there is a simple, effective way to protect yourself. Supernatural Silver is a revolutionary silver solution that is clinically shown to be several hundred times more effective than colloidal or ionic silver. And it's powerful enough to help protect you and your family from deadly viruses, bacterias, and fungus. Supernatural Silver is effective against more than 500 different disease-causing pathogens without encouraging drug resistance and without side effects. Supernatural Silver is scientifically supported and is the number one choice of thousands for improved health and immune system support. Go to SupernaturalSilver.com and use the code SILVER2015 for 30% off. That's SupernaturalSilver.com. Give yourself and your loved ones a fighting chance. Year after year, we watch the threat steadily increase. And now, this winter has been the worst on record when it comes to our immune systems and health. For more than two years, InfoWarsLife.com has been watching this crisis intensify. And Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Complex was our answer. Using a proprietary process that takes ancient proven herbs and combines them with modern science, this powerful and affordable formula contains more than 14 key herbs and extracts, including Echinacea, ginger root, elderberry, golden seal root, a proprietary yin chio formula, and many, many more. I take it, and so does my family. It's made in the USA, gluten-free, alcohol-free, no artificial flavors or colors, and not tested on animals. Take advantage of this introductory offer for ancient defense, normally $19.95, now only $14.95. That's 25% off. Visit InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139 to secure your ancient defense. I'm going to Mike here in a moment, listening on KSCO there in Santa Cruz, San Francisco. Gerald Salente is our guest. The website is trendsresearch.com. 
We're going to keep Gerald a little bit into the next hour to get into a few more of his trends. Then I'm going to open the phones up on vaccines. So I'm sorry I wasn't clear with the listeners. We're talking to Gerald Salente right now. we got a loaded phone bank. Folks want to talk to him. Uh, so Mike in California, listening on the great Michael's Whirling hey, Station. Uh, go ahead. Good morning. Welcome. Yeah, glad Gerald's on. Always glad to hear Gerald. Hey, I have a question for you on real estate. In uh, 2008, we invested in uh, tangible assets of a significant amount to shelter our savings from uh, the devaluation cycle. Uh, my wife's been looking at real estate, um, and I just want uh, Gerald to comment on what he thinks about uh, real estate as an investment for those that have a limited amount of resources uh, sealed in tangible assets. Well, you know, I don't give financial advice. I'm not permitted to. It's a trend forecast. I'm not a financial advisor. Only speaking for myself. Mm -hmm. If you have a piece of real estate, you think you could, it's going to be profitable, and, you, and yep. you're smart enough to understand the negatives and positives about it. To me, it's a good investment, you know, again, but not to do it on a speculative level. Like you said, you, you doubled down on America and bought a bunch of real estate as well. You're not backing down. No, I, I bought a 1750s building, a 1763, and a 1774. You know, so I bought it It's out of passion and out of an understanding that these things are It's a love of art and price. culture. You literally bought into 1776. Yes, and, and I did because I'm an American. And my, you know, as I say, my blood is Italian, but my heart's American. And these people that say, love it or leave it, I say, no, you leave it. I bought these buildings because I want to restore America back to the core principles of our founding fathers. So that's why I, I, I invest in this. But for the caller, if you think it's a good investment, the real estate goes like this, but it always keeps going higher. So if it's something that you're doing out at, of at wisdom of what the potential is, I would suggest you consider it seriously. Yeah, if you make and a good buy, it's in the right area, and you, and you understand you're a long-term deal. And if it's a piece of property you can make some money on with a business while it's there, I think that's the best type of investment. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Not for speculation, but for growth. Yeah, well, I guess the consideration is, you know, what uh, to know what is a bubble market. I mean, I, you know, some of these price index. You know, you, you like can't tell because we are, I talked before about the volatility in the markets. I also talked yeah. about how these low interest rates are not driving demand. So you have to make your own choice sure. because I, I believe we're going to see a crash. A Let's panic. get I agree. The, the Austin bubble's already popping, the biggest in the country. Aaron in California. Thanks, Mike. Aaron in California, go ahead. You're on the air. <clears throat> yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Salente, uh, you, for years, were the top trends forecast, uh, forecaster, but uh, you made some predictions for 2014. You said uh, gold 2000 and a financial collapse by March 2014. That did not happen. You were dethroned as top trends forecast. That's the facts. It's all in right, Well, let me get him to respond. Those are some huge yeah. claims. Yeah. I believe we're already in an artificial... Yeah. yeah. Let me go on. I, I, it's easy to respond. I, I never said gold would go to 2,000. I said I believe gold should be over 2,000. I never said it would go there. On the crash, I believe that the Federal Reserve was going to raise interest rates by March. I was wrong. I never dreamt that they would keep interest rates at, again, they haven't raised them since 2006. Yeah. This is unprecedented. It's like somebody dying and they keep giving them adrenaline until their parents get there. I've actually gone and seen my friend die and they were waiting on his dad to get there. So they were giving him adrenaline. He got to see his parents, everybody, and then he passed out and died. I mean, uh, that's America. They're just pumping adrenaline in to keep us alive. But, you know, it's, it, it's going to crash. All the experts are saying that. We'll be right back. Uh, Gerald's been proven accurate. Thank I don't want to be able to elaborate on that. I mean, look at what uh, Trump's saying. Visit GCNlive.com. It's the fundamentals show a crash, okay? When it comes, we don't know. The Fed had said they were going to stop doing QE3. A lot of people I talked to said they have to. In fact, uh, you know, Kaiser predicted that the bond market would go crazy. It kind of did, but the point is things have gotten so artificial with the rigging, it's just going and going. But governments are digging in. The Pentagon says they believe a big crash is coming. I mean, Gerald's pretty mainstream now when it comes to actual financial analysts uh, saying, uh, I mean, some type of big collapse is coming. Look at the collapse in Europe. Look at collapses in other areas. But I want Aaron to be able to come back at Gerald 
I mean, look, I don't care if you call in Aaron and disagree with Gerald and say you're wrong. I can just hear in your voice you really enjoy saying you have been dethroned and all this. Look, I hope Gerald's wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I hope all these other financial analysts are wrong. You know, I hope, uh, but, but that's not what the elites are doing. They're all buying emergency getaways around the world. That was in the London Guardian. So I talked to billionaires and insiders, and they, were, they are scared you know what. Uh, so, I mean, what do you say to that, Aaron? Um, okay, you got me on my back foot. You asked me a question. Here's the thing. Uh, uh, Gerald Slimter did not come up or coin the term bankism. That's another thing. And I can back up those first, those first two allegations. All right, you got an audio problem. Hold on. And now you're going to say he didn't found the term bankism. He founded prostitutes. But this is a bunch of territorial nitpicking. Gerald, you want to respond to this guy? Yeah, well, I, but first, I know who this guy is. He keeps sending me very nasty emails all the time. All right, let him go then. Yeah, the, um, the, here's the deal. I never said gold was going to go to 2000. I had pre, I had. Forecast. You said it should be on this show, but they've rigged the market. Right. I never said it would hit it. I said it should be at it and over. I've said this over and over again. I never gave a date. Number two, on the rates, the Federal Reserve should be raising rates. Everybody knows it. And when they try to do it, you can see panic in the marketplace. I had believed last year that by March or a year and a half ago, they would have to raise rates. They didn't. They kept them low. When rates go up, the economy goes down. Here's a fact. Go around the world. Every government virtually now is dropping rates to all time lows. Australia. Go throughout Europe. Europe just joined the QE, which says inflation, but then they're also deflating with the Saudis. Is there a strategy there to try to balance that? What this is, by the way, that's I'm glad you brought up this deflation thing. Here's the big lie that they're telling people. They have to do deal with deflation and bring it up to inflation. Here's what they're selling the public. Matter of fact, Brian Williams could pull this one off. Here's what they say. Deflation is dangerous because if people know that prices are going to go down, that means they're going to wait to buy things knowing that the prices are going to go down. That's a lot of baloney. The deflation is a depression. Prices are going down because there's too much supply and not enough demand. Sure. It's not only oil prices that are down, copper prices, Iron ore, nickel, one commodity after another is down to five and a half and six year lows because demand is off. Go and look what happened and the hype that no one's talking about now. Look at the numbers that came out from December retail sales. Oh, they were down. They were supposed to go up. Why were they down? Remember the big sales before Christmas? 50 to 70 percent off. Look who just declared bankruptcy. Cache yesterday. How many other? JC Penney's closing a bunch of stores. Stay there. Yeah, and we're not happy that things are bad, but every real fundamental, 100 million out of the workforce, 50 million on food stamps. I mean, this guy's saying you're wrong, saying we're in financial trouble. We are collapsing, but they give us a sugar high. Oh, I mean, just it, 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 it's just all over the place now. Gerald was saying it five years ago, 10 years ago. I was saying it. because You could see where trillions in debt was going, thousands of trillions in derivatives, all this garbage. You know there's going to be some type of collapse. Governments are digging in. Gerald had said last year, or about a, two years ago, that he believed 2014 could be the time for this, that QE had to end. It's still going. Now there's a world race. So will it be inflation? or deflationary. The Saudis aren't just trying to bankrupt U.S. shale producers or the Russians. I believe they're, they're introducing depressionary prices to actually uh, uh, attempt to pull down the inflationary spike that we see in this Weimar money printing. But regardless, it's a juggling act as the real economy dies, as savings go down, as joblessness increases, as wages go down, as 40-something million people went from full-time to part-time under Obamacare, as that kicks in, and as Obama's energy policies kick in, uh, I don't see how the economy won't implode. And now most analysts are just saying it's any minute.
But who knows, in this Alice in Wonderland thing, Gerald, when do you, I mean, how long can this go? I mean, we've got all these big top guys saying it's going to, you know, get out of the market. Doom's about to happen. What do you think? Again, the, the volatility is telling the story. And by the way, these low oil prices, if you go back to 1986, that's one of the ways I made my name as a trend forecaster. It was in the Wall Street Journal. I had predicted that the crash of 87 in the beginning of the year, in January, I said the market was going to crash. And one of the fundamentals were crashing oil prices. Yes, the Saudis want to get rid of competition. But again, as I mentioned before, you look at the commodity prices around the world. You can buy a ton of reinforcement rod, rebar, in China cheaper than you can a ton of cabbage. There's so much product on the market. You go to any store now and you're seeing slashed prices of, you name the, the product. Now on the, on the inflation, yes, it's a Weimar type of inflation. It's not as though in supply and demand where there's so much demand that the price of the product is going up. What they're doing around the world is devaluing their currencies. So it's going to cause people more to buy things. For example, you look what's going on in Europe. Now that Draghi announced, and they knew that they were going to announce their version of QE, what has happened to the, uh, the, the euro? Oh, to the 11-year lows. No, no kidding. So now it's costing all the people more money to buy things. But the good 40 news 40% is, of young people are unemployed in places like Spain. We're in a global depression. They're just papering it over because production's been so high traditionally. We've got a lot of baubles and still have food, but even that is starting to wear thin. They're papering it over with the word deflation. It's depression. It's not deflation. And that's the big That's lie. right. Oil prices went down during the Great Depression. That's what happens. Exactly. All the prices are going down, but people are making less and their currencies are being devalued, just like Franklin Roosevelt devalued sure. our currency when they took us off the gold reserve. And remember, the dollar was pegged to gold. What was it, a $20, $20 and something cents sure. an ounce? And then gold and went then up after they did, that. They called in all the gold, and then they repegged the price of gold to $35 right. an ounce, which means you just lost 70% of your purchasing power. It's called a depression. You go around the world, I was mentioning, at the record low interest rates you're seeing. It's costing everybody more to buy things, but what they're doing is they're juicing the equity markets. In anticipation of Draghi's QE, now you're looking at the European markets at seven year high. Well, here's an example. They had Gibbs, when he was press secretary, said there is no drone program when it was a public program. And it's the same thing. There is no depression forming when there is one. I mean, it, it's this game of, I'll never forget, uh, they had, uh, whoever that blonde was, Perino or whatever her name is, as the press secretary. And they were asking her under Bush, you know, uh, uh, are oil prices up because the dollar's been devalued? And she said, I can't you know, answer that. And they said, well, well, we need you to tell us if there's dollar devaluation, as if tell us if the sun came out this morning. It, it, it's just total mind control. I want to go to some more calls here. I mean, I wish Gerald was wrong. I wish I was wrong. I wish we weren't going into a depression. But all the indicators are there. I don't know exactly how it's going to go down, but it's going down. Uh, let's talk to Kyle in PA. Thanks for holding her on the air with Gerald. Hey, guys. Um, well, historically speaking, the collapse always happens in the last year of a sitting presidential term. Um, and historically speaking, the collapse is always dramatically larger than the one previously to it. Uh, my question for Gerald is, what does American life look like in a collapse of the size that we're looking at. That's a great question. That's a great question. You know, I have a saying, when people lose everything and have nothing left to lose, they lose it. And they're losing it around the world. But we don't have to have it happen like that. You know, the elections are coming up and no one's really excited that I know of who the potential candidates are choosing from the bloods of the Crips, or as people prefer to call them, the Republicans and Democrats. To me, they're murderers and thieves. Their records prove it. Again, look what's going on around the world. 
out of nowhere, out of nowhere, in less than a year, the Podemos party, they just had a rally over 300 people, 1,000, 300,000 people turned out in Spain. In Greece, the Shariza party. In Italy, between the Five Star Movement and the Northern League. In the UK, with UKIP. You're seeing it, like them or not, dislike them, I'm not getting into that. What I'm saying is, whether it's Le Pen in France, you name the country. Yeah, the it's right wing, it's, it's, it's liberal, it's socialist. Everywhere, people are electing, quote, radical, anti-globalist, anti-New World Order, anti-EU parties. So what I'm saying is, to prevent what we can see coming, and to see chaos in the streets, because, hey, they just did it in New York. Now they got terror response groups. We've seen the militarization of the police. Yeah, and notice the terror response groups are for protesters now. Yeah, they said it. Exactly. So what I'm saying is they're putting these things into place because they know the people have nothing to lose and they're going to lose it. What we're suggesting is let's take a different tact. Now to me is the time for a new third party. By the way, that's the other way I made my name in my book, Trend Tracking, that I wrote in 1988. You predicted Ross Perot. Exactly. Now the conditions exist better than any time for a new third party. I agree. That's why they don't like Rand Paul and people that kind of represent a third party movement within the system. I think he is uh, being too political and acting like he's establishment. They're never going to let him in uh, acting like that because they know he's a good guy. Uh, I want to go to some more phone calls here. Thank you, Kyle. Great question. Great caller. Uh, Adam in Canada, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hi, Alex. Hi, Gerald. Uh, first off, I just want to say God bless you guys as well as all your listeners and everyone throughout the world. I know this is an important cause and, and highly relevant. I've been a listener for a couple of years waking up. Uh, quick question for you, your crew, and uh, Gerald's take is I've seen a, a, a recent article circulating alternative news media on a class action lawsuit uh, against the Bank of Canada from Canadians. I wonder if that's A, legit, and uh, B, if that's part of the solution we're looking for. for yeah, not aware of what you're getting at, but I mean... It, it, yeah, I am. I am. There, there is a lawsuit, and it does appear legit, and it can really make a difference. Yeah, and, because lawsuits uh, get discovery, and then that's how... So many of these documents come out, as you know, Gerald, recently it's just coming out that basically everything's rigged. Yo, it is rigged, maybe yeah. But I, that, that lawsuit is gaining, gaining popularity, and it's something worth looking into. I'll look into and it. And it can be the beginning of a change. And again, yeah, and you know, going back to the, 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 the whole question of what's going on, that people have to understand that it's not, it is, the, it is bankism. It is the grand manipulation. Corporatism. It, it's total multinational takeover, and between the, the Europeans, again, going back to Europe, they are fighting their deal with the Transatlantic Investment Partnership, or whatever they're calling it. It's not going to happen coming out of Europe. It's hardly being reported here. And I just want to take this, this second, or this minute, to thank you, Alex, for what you're doing to wake people up the crew that you have, the information that you're putting out, and that everybody out there listening to support the people that are advertising on the show. These are products and services that are proven, that are natural, that are for the benefit of everyone that buys them. And it's the same thing what we're putting out with the Trends Journal. Thank you, Gerald. Yep. Tell folks about the Trends Journal. Let's keep you one more segment if you can do it. Just five more minutes after this to finish some calls or six more minutes after this break. But tell folks about Trends Research, how they can get the magazine. Because even if people think they know all this, it's great to give friends and family. It's, it's TrendsJournal.com. We just had a conference here at the beginning of the year of the top trends of 2015. It's been a blockbuster, a five and a half hour conference. It, you see from that what we were saying, what's happening, and where it's going. Again, here are the facts. The facts are this. You look at the declining wages in this country. It's a fact. You look at median household income below 1999 levels. It's a fact. And as I was mentioning, you look at QE. Here's the deal. When they started QE in 2009, the markets went from 8,000 to 18,000. Who did it benefit as everyone else? That's right, the doing? insiders. We'll be right back. One more second uh, for vaccine comments uh, and hit a few other news items. But uh, so each person, just throw out your question, your comment, quick answer from Gerald, and then we'll move to the next person. Uh, let's go to Joe in California. 
Then we'll go to Rob in New York. Go ahead, Joe. Hello, Alex and Gerald. Great to uh, be able to talk to you. And uh, my quick question is, uh, any ideas on protecting IRAs or 401ks from government confiscation or... How do you feel about gold and silver? Great question. Obama did just announce his State of the Union. They want to start grabbing your education funds and taxing them. It is beginning. Gerald? Yes, you're right. And gold and silver, I'm bullish on both, particularly gold. And again, I buy gold from the golden years. Some, at some point, this thing is going to collapse. You're seeing a devaluation of currencies around the world. So gold for long term for me. And of course, the government will steal anything that they get their hands on. And if there's a real market panic, what's going to happen with your IRA? What is it invested in? And where is it going to go? Thank you, Joe. Let's talk to Rob in New York. You're on the air. Go ahead, Rob. Hey, guys. How you doing? Good, brother. All right. Um, Gerald, so uh, you, you, the economy, it, it's not that great. You know, if, if we raise, raise interest rates, you know, what is that going to look like for the average person? And is that something just to help us push the dollar towards parity with the euro? What, what's going to happen, the reason why I had believed that there would be a crash is because when they raise interest rates, this Ponzi scheme of banks borrowing at virtually nothing and then loaning it back to us and anything they can get, that starts ending and this equity market start going down. I mentioned what happened to the U.S. market from 8,000 to 18 that led the seven-year highs in Europe, the market's gone up 57% in Japan from lowering rates. So when the rates go up, this whole thing collapses, and it hurts everybody. But if they keep pumping it, uh, then it will have its own set of problems. I mean, it's just we're... Well, exactly. Exactly. They're devaluing our currencies, and that's why I'm bullish on gold. Absolutely. I mean, long term, it just spells massive inflation, but then they're engaged in a depression... I uh, hope that answers your question, Rob. Good question. Leland in Illinois, you're on the air with Gerald Salenti. I, I want to say that the derivatives market, the, bank, the, big, the, the two big to fail banks hold over $200 trillion in derivatives right now. They just tied that to the FDIC credit. $2,000 so trillion. Anyone, yes. So shouldn't anyone with a 401 or RACI, anything, shouldn't they take that now and convert that to gold? I mean, well, and, again, and another I, thing, what do I you think is people, trending with Russia? Yeah, I can't tell people what to do with this. I'm not a financial advisor. You've got to do what you think's best. You speaking can, for myself, yeah. and this is a fact, speaking for myself, let me finish. All of my IRA, and I have to put it into, I have to put it into it because I need the tax deductions, is in, in gold. ETFs. Would I rather have it in physical? Of course I would. All right, Leland in Illinois, you're, you're chomping at the bit. Go ahead. What else you want to say? Yes, I just, uh, and this with Russia, I mean, you know, the Bible says that the world will have a one world money, a one world economy, and a one world religion. Now, in order to get that one world money, which they have already, the IMF has it. It's called they got to the destroy world. all the other world currencies. They got to destroy the other currencies. That's why they doing what they doing. That's why the devaluation is going on. The Bible, what the Bible said, it is happening exactly like it said. It just didn't give us the details of that Obama would do this and it would cause this, and that George Bush would do this and it would cause this. Well, there's but no it's doubt all it's all serious. Uh, Let me answer that. Mm -hmm. You look at you mentioned Russia. Russia's been buying gold like there's no tomorrow. So have the elites. The billionaires have been buying it exactly. while saying we're idiots to get it. Oh, and I want to make a comment, too, about, you know, your advertisers and what I said. So everybody knows that, that I'm not blowing smoke. I don't know if you know this. I have an honorary doctorate in integrative and complementary medicine from the National University of Health Sciences. The first book that I really worked on was Natural Healing back in 1988. And if you read the introduction, they thank us for getting so much of the research that went into this book from the Trends Research Institute. That's right. So and I'm you kind of helped kick off a lot of the whole wellness movement we see today. Right. So what I'm saying is what I'm saying to support this, I'm saying it because I believe in it. And it's what I do. I'm not like a Brian Williams. No, we appreciate you supporting our operation. We support yours. We try to bring people the best water filters, the best quality nutraceuticals. 
Uh, we just try to do to others like we you know, like to be done to us, and it's people's buying the products that support InfoWars.com, InfoWarsStore.com. And, and you've got several fantastic websites. I guess uh, TrendsJournal.com is the place to go subscribe, TrendsResearch.com uh, as well. Gerald, thank you so much. we got loaded phones for you, but we're out of time. We'll talk to you again soon. Thank you so much, champ. Thank you. All right, folks, we're going to clear the board. We're going to come back with your vaccine stories. Do you love them? Do you hate them? Did they help you or did they kill you?